Good happy Monday evening, August 26, 2019. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. Fire destroys home where dairy man was accused of shooting wife. Neighbors report hearing explosion before fire. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Ray Brewer. out the door when it matters most. For more than a decade, he's been right there, everywhere. And when American jobs are on the line, he leads the charge. ABC's World News Tonight with David Muir is America's most watched newscast, and we thank you. This was the house back on August 10th, when it was the center of a murder investigation. 79-year-old Roderick Munstis is charged with second-degree murder for allegedly shooting his 74-year-old wife, Ellen. And this is that same home at 151 Bypass 28 in Derry around 2 o'clock this morning. The first engine was on scene within two and a half minutes, and the building was fully involved in fire at that time. Justin Tilson lives next door and says he awoke to the sound of glass breaking and then stepped outside. Just big, big ball of fire in the woods. It's because of trees between us and them, so there's, all you can see was big bright light. The fire chief says they mounted an exterior attack, and firefighters did catch a bit of a break. Uh, we had two hydrants right in front of the building, so we were even needily able to establish water supply. Firefighters, though, did have to watch their step as they fought the fire. We did have a power line to the home uh, that was on fire and on the ground that created a hazard. No firefighters were injured, and the home is believed to have been vacant. The chief says it's too soon to say if there's anything suspicious about the fire, but they are taking into consideration the fact that there was a murder in this home. It certainly does create some concerns. Uh, I don't really don't want to comment too much more on that. That'll all be part of the investigation today. As you take a live look at the scene, investigators say that while the initial reports were that the home was vacant, the state fire marshal's office, which is leading the investigation, says that's one thing that they are still looking into. They also hope to be able to provide some more information later this afternoon. Reporting live in Derry, Ray Brewer, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Town of Candia Police Department. Take a look at this Facebook post they shared today. On Saturday, August 24th, 2019, at around 10 o'clock a.m., there was a vehicle broken into at the Candia Springs Adventure Park. An older male pictured in the older model dark colored jeep broke into someone's vehicle and was able to make off with the victim's wallet. We believe this male lives in Candia or the surrounding area towns. Anyone with information on this vehicle or his identity is encouraged to call the Candia Police Department at 483-2318. Officer S. Pelliner. And take a look at those photos. So if you recognize that suspect, call Candia Police Department. UNH Police Department. The following incident was posted and widely shared on social media. UNH and Durham Police are investigating this report and request any further witnesses reach out to our departments. On August 25th, 
2019 at approximately 4 o'clock a.m. The UNH Police Department received a report from an Uber driver of an alleged male walking with an alleged intoxicated female on Main Street in the area of the Whittemore Center. The Uber driver and the female passenger grew concerned for the well-being of the seemingly intoxicated female and the female passenger decided to intervene and convince the intoxicated female to get into Uber driver's car with her and took her back to her residency. Approximately an hour later, the Uber driver stated they saw the same male who allegedly pulling a different female by the arm who allegedly appeared intoxicated as well. This time, the Uber driver intervened and pulled a knife on the male who allegedly ran off into the darkness. Both of these incidents were not reported to the Durham or UNH police departments for over three hours. Once the Uber driver contacted police, both agencies began an immediate and extensive investigation of the incidents while reviewing video surveillance in the area. While the original report alleged that the incident took place on Mill Road between the shopping plaza and Academy Way, subsequent interviews then placed the incidents three blocks away on campus, possibly in the area of McDaniel Drive. Investigators from both agencies have delinquently investigating the alleged occurrence and have not been able to locate the incidents on area surveillance cameras that should have picked up such activity. Investigators are conducting re-interviews of those persons allegedly involved today. While the UNH and Durham Police take all incidents seriously and will extend all investigative strategies, we remain Remind everyone to call 911 immediately if you see or hear anything suspicious. Please do not wait to report suspicious activity as you are not bothering us and we want you to understand that if something appears odd, let the police investigate the matter quickly and efficiently. Anyone having any additional information on this specific incident on McDaniel Drive is encouraged to contact the UNH Police Department at 603-862-1427 or the Durham Police Department at 603-868-2324. Information or tips can also be provided to the University Police Department on the department's website or at URL www.unh.edu slash UPD slash anonymous reporting or download the Live Safe app www.livesafemobile.com to your iOS or Android device. Or you may also choose to remain anonymous by reporting information to the www.secoscrimestoppers.com, calling 603-431-1199, or texting crimes at 274637, and including T-I-P-S-C-S -S in the message. Rewards to up to 100,000 may be paid for help solving these cases. If the
the information leads to an arrest or indictment of the suspect's Chief Paul H. Dean and Chief David Kurd, University of New Hampshire Police Department, Town of Durham Police Department. Man sentenced to 30 years in life in crash that killed five teens. One victim was New Hampshire High School student. A Vermont man was sentenced to a minimum of 30 years in state prison Monday after being convicted of killing five teens in 2016 wrong way crash. Judge Kevin Griffin ruled Monday that Stephen Orgonin, 38, will serve a sentence of 26 years to life for each of the five counts of second-degree murder, plus an additional sentence of four to five years of grossly negligent driving. Prosecutors sought the sentence of 40 years to life on each count of second-degree murder, citing loss of life and reckless action. Orgar in was found guilty by a jury in May of five counts of second-degree murder, in addition to lesser charge of grossly negligent driving and driving a car without the owner's consent. Each count of second-degree murder carried a sentence of 20 years to life. Following the jury's unanimous decision, Bergar Inn's defense attorney filed a motion for a new trial on the claim that he was not mentally fit to stand trial, which was subsequently denied by Griffin. The crash killed Mary Harris, 16, of Moortown, Cyrus Zaharthi, 16, of Moortown, Liam Hall, 16, of Faithstone, Jane Crows, 15, of Faithstone, Ella Brookins, 16, of Waterbury, four of the teenagers attended Harwood Union High School in Duxbury, Causey attended Kimball Union, Union Academy in Marden, New Hampshire. Monday, Griffin heard the statements of victims' families for nearly three hours, with some speaking forgiveness. After a brief recess, Griffin delivered his sentence over the course of nearly 30 minutes first addressing the families of the victims. Orgoin was seen breaking into tears as Griffin's sentencing continued. All aspects of the trial are automatically reviewed by the State Supreme Court. Fourth human Tripoli case confirmed in Massachusetts woman reported to have virus dies. Let's take a listen to that video from WCVB Boston. We are here to discuss Jesse's online time. 30 minutes. One hour with the tablet, and my client will walk the dog. Do the dishes. One hour with the tablet, the dog will do the dishes, and we got a deal. Control your family's online time with Xfinity x -Fi. Let's talk about getting our ears pierced. Switch today. Antoinette and Erica, good afternoon. Doctors say the risk of Tripoli is still very much around. They want you to know what to look for and steps you can take to stay safe. Lori Sylvia of Fairhaven passed away after contracting Triple E. Her heartbroken family remembering the woman they describe as kind, a real estate agent, wife, and mother. Everybody she met, she, you know, she's been 
Sylvia was receiving treatment at Tufts after a spinal tap confirmed the virus. She's the state's fourth human case of eastern equine encephalitis this year. Dr. Brian Chow is an infectious disease physician at Tufts Medical Center. Considering that there have only been 100 cases in Massachusetts since the 1930s, that does seem to, to, be, uh, to, to be a lot of cases. 95% of patients with Triple E go undiagnosed as mild forms. Symptoms can present themselves similar to the flu. About 5% of those people will progress to a severe encephalitis, meaning swelling or inflammation of the brain, and they'll wind up in the hospital. Mosquitoes carrying Tripoli have tested positive in the southeastern part of the state, including Bristol and Plymouth counties. The high-risk season typically runs until September. The State Department of Public Health is warning everyone in Massachusetts should continue to use mosquito repellent, and those in high and critical risk communities should consider staying indoors during the dusk to dawn hours to reduce exposure. Other things that you can do to make sure that you are preventing this, be sure to remove any standing water around your home and don't panic just because you've gotten a mosquito bite. Many areas that are in high or critical risk zones have been doing aerial spraying and even moving outdoor events to earlier times to avoid those peak exposure times when mosquitoes are out and about. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And now let's take a look at your U.S. stock market and see how your U.S. stock market closed for this Monday evening. And here's a look at that U.S. stock market for all of you for this Monday evening. Your Dow Joe Industrial Average closed in the green one up. Your NASDAQ closed in the green one up. S&P 500 closed in the green went up. Gold closed in the red went down. Oil closed in the red went down. U.S. 10-year closed in the green went up. Euro slash USD closed in the green went up. And VIX closed in the red and went down. Dow gains more than 250 points on hopes U.S. and China restart trade talk. Stocks jumped on Monday after President Trump said China is ready to come back to the negotiation table following a phone call Sunday. Oklahoma judge order orders Johnson & Johnson to pay $572 million in opiate suit. An Oklahoma judge ordered Johnson and Johnson to pay an excess of five hundred and seventy-two million as part of a lawsuit about the spread of opiate epidemic in the state. And that does it for this Monday evening edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Monday evening, and I'll see you back here tomorrow for another newscast. Good night and bye.